that being done, we're going to continue in First Thessalonians. But before I do that, um, today's PSA. It's kind of cool. This is Emily Demorka and LAPD officer Alex Fraser. Amen. You may have seen her because Officer Fraser's video of Zamorka singing an Italian opera in the Metro subway station has been seen more than a million times and has triggered an outpouring of support for the Russian singer who's been homeless for a couple years. She's 52, is a classically trained pianist and violinist, and she used to teach lessons and made money as a street performer. However, she told the station, CNN and KBC, that she had some health issues, and then someone stole her violin and smashed it, and then she broke her wrist, which kept her from playing. And she says she likes to sing in the subway because it feels like being on stage. However, since that video went viral, she has been offered a recording opportunity. Hmm? A GoFundMe has raised more than $60,000 to help her get on her feet, and... The L.A. City Council member who is in the district where she's been sleeping on the street, they're working to get her some housing. So I thought that was pretty cool that uh, you, you find yourself in a bad way and then by someone uh, just taking the time to say, hey, let's check this person out. It goes viral and now things are falling into place for her. Amen? Amen. That's today's PSA. Wow. Now, for today's sermon, um, I have to be on my good behavior because my best friend is back. Keep the fire burning. Keep the fire burning. Uh, it's just one verse. It's real simple. It's only five words. But there's a whole lot here. So I'm going to pray, and then we're just going to get right into it. Lord, I thank you once again for this time. We give you all the praise, glory, and honor due your name. Lord Jesus, we ask you to be with us as we seek to hear from you, Lord. Pray, Lord God, that if there be anything that would be a hindrance to any of us, that you would put it out of our minds and under our feet, so we all can be fully focused and attentive to what you are saying to the church by the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, thank you. We praise you. Let all who agree say amen. Amen. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19 says this. Do not quench the Spirit. Do not quench the Spirit. Amen? Do not do it. Um, just by way of introduction, this Greek word... I'm not good at pronunciation, but I'm going to give it a crack. Subanumi, it means to extinguish, to put out. If things are on fire, you get the hose or the fire extinguisher and you put it out, right? Um, or to suppress, to stifle. Like if someone's talking and you don't want to hear them talk anymore, you might be inclined to extinguish their voice by putting your hand over their mouth. <laughs> right. But here's the thing. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5.19, do not quench the spirit. That means you should do the opposite. That means you should do everything that helps to keep the spirit moving in your life. Right? Do not quench. Do not extinguish it. Do not put the spirit out. Do not stop the work of the spirit in your life. That's really what this verse is saying, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, if you want another example of what that word means, right there, Ephesians 6.16, where it says, take up the shield of faith, which you can extinguish the flaming darts of the evil one. Right, you want to extinguish the enemy's work, but you don't want to stop God's work. So that's what it means. Amen. You with me? All right, here we go. First thing you got to remember is, the Holy Spirit is a gift. Jesus said that I'm leaving, but it's a good thing that I'm leaving. 
Because since I'm leaving, I'm going to leave you something in return. I'm going to leave you the spirit, right? And we're, we're, we're really getting into this in the Bible study on Wednesday night. He says, even the spirit of truth, I'm going to leave them with you. And if you read John 16, you'll see all the things that the spirit of truth is supposed to do in our lives. So it's a great gift from God that we have the spirit, right? But here's the thing. When someone gives you a gift, how do you treat that gift? You know, I don't know about you, but when I receive a gift, one, I'm, I'm humbled, bless you, I'm flattered, and then I, I, I treat it like it's something precious because that means the person who gave me the gift thought enough about me to give me something. So I'm going to treat it with the utmost respect. Amen? I hope you would do the same. Otherwise, I may not be inclined to give you a gift because you're just going to trash the gift, right? So when God gives you a gift, treat it with honor. Treat it with respect, right? You know, all you brothers in here who are married or dating or single or whatever, when God brings that special person in your life, Treat it as if God himself were standing right there because he gave you that gift, right? You know, I had all these wild parties while she, while she was away, but now I have to act right because she's back, right? Uh, no, dear, I, I behaved while you were gone. The church is my witness. But, yeah, it's a gift. The Holy Spirit, it's a gift. And I'm not talking about speaking in tongues. I'm talking about all the things that he specifically wants to do for you. He says he will lead you and guide you into all truth. He will bring things to your understanding. He will tell you about things to come. All these things are for your benefit, right? So you want the spirit to be working in your life. So you can understand all truth. So you can know what's going to happen, and prepare yourself, right? So you're not left out in the cold. So you want the Spirit to keep working. And here's a few verses that talk about the importance of keeping the fire going. Leviticus 6, 12 and 13 says this, The fire on the altar shall be kept burning on it, it shall not go out. The priest shall burn wood on it every morning, and he shall arrange the burnt offering on it, and it shall burn the fat of the peace offering. Fire shall be kept burning on the altar continually. It shall not go out. It shall not be extinguished. The Spirit needs you to keep the fire going so the Spirit can be free to work in your life, right? And you know what hinders the spirit is when we mess up. That's what hinders the spirit. When we sin, when we don't listen to the spirit, right? Um, I know this is not popular, but sometimes it just needs to be said. Israel kept having issues because they kept turning to other gods. And there's at least three times I can think of in the Bible Two in Judges, one in Isaiah, where he says, hey, go to those gods you've been serving. I've been here, I've been sending prophets to you day after day, early in the morning to warn you, and you've been ignoring them. So now that you're coming to me because the enemy has come, he says, go to those other gods, right? Let them save you. You don't want God to be that firm with you. So it's important for your own spiritual growth and development that you keep the fire burning. You keep the spirit free to move in your life. And, and in Malachi chapter 3, verses 2 and 3, this is why. 
The Bible says, who can endure the day of his coming? Talking about the day of the Lord. Who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like a fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi and refine them like gold and silver, and they will bring offers, excuse me, offerings in righteousness to the Lord. This is why this is important. In olden times, when silver and gold was mined, you know, you, you, you dig it up out of the ground. It's not like it just flies out of the sky. You dig it up out of the ground, and then you take it to the refiner. And what the refiner does, he puts it under a hot fire. And all the things that are not silver and gold, you know, all the dross, all the impurities are burned off. And then what's left is something that's 99.9% .9 pure, right? You with me? So in our life, the spirit is like that fire that refines us. We go through these trials and tribulations and challenges, and it's not for us to be beat down, but it's for us to be refined so that when we come through on the other side, we're stronger, we're better. We're faster, like some of us older folks who remember the six million dollar man, he's strong. We can rebuild him. We can make him stronger and faster and better. We can do all these things, right? This is what the spirit wants to do in our lives is to make us better. So don't resist the fire that's burning in your life. Because it's designed to make those things that are not good for you go away, right? And then when you come to the Lord to offer your offerings, they'll be well received because you have been purified. And so God knows your heart is in the right place. Right. Don't be like Nadab and Abihu who just went in there drunk saying, we're here. Because God struck them down. Right. Because they were one. They didn't reverence the altar. And two, their hearts weren't in the right place. Right. So for us, when you come into the house of the Lord, make sure your mind is right where it's supposed to be. You know, don't have your mind on the football game or the basketball game or the baseball game or whatever it is when you're in God's house. Have your mind focused on the things of God so that God can speak to you personally and directly, right? Because if your mind is elsewhere, you might miss something that's really important. You know, like when Shelly tells me, are you listening to me? And I'm like, yeah, I'm listening. But I'm actually thinking about something else. Then, you know, what she was telling me what was important, but I wasn't listening. So when I need to remember what she said, I'm going to have to go back and ask her. Then that asking means he wasn't listening to me at all. Right? He wasn't listening to me at all. God speaks to us through the Bible. All the time. But you have to actually be actively listening for him to speak. Because if you're just reading the Bible to be reading it, you're going to miss what God is saying because it's just a story. And then when you find yourself in the moment of truth and you're going through a crisis and you're like, ah. I remember someone in the Bible went through this. Uh, what did they do? Oh, man, I should have paid attention. I should have actually thought about what I was reading. That's why it's important. And just so you know, I'm not making all this up. In Matthew 3, 11, the Bible says, John speaking, that's John the Baptist. I baptize you with water for repentance, but he was coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandal I'm not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. He will baptize you with the Spirit and with fire. That baptism of fire is what we're talking about. And once you have gone through that baptism of fire, it's your duty to keep those fires burning, to keep the Spirit actively working in your life. Do not quench the Spirit. Don't let that fire go out. Now, I'm sure you're wondering, well, what happens if by chance, you know, I get sleepy and I go to sleep? 
and the fire goes out. Well, the first thing that's going to happen, you're going to be cold, right? You know, if you go to a mountain cabin on a vacation and you have primed a really nice fire and you curled up by the fireplace, it feels good, amen? But if you let the fire go out, then the cold that's outside comes inside. Then you're walking around. Right? In a similar way, when the fire of the Spirit is like moving in your life, and you know that saying, he's on fire. He's on fire. He's on fire for God. He's doing everything that God says he should be doing. Right? But what happens when you let the fire go out? Then they're going to say, Weren't you that brother that was always preaching and quoting scripture and all that? Now I see you at the at the club. What happened to the scripture? Where's your Bible? Didn't you always carry a Bible with you? Oh, well, you know, the fire went out. I lost what I had, right? No, that's why it's important to keep the fire going. Matthew 24, 9 through 12 says this. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and put you to death, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And many will fall away and betray one another and hate one another. Ouch. And many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. The love of many will grow cold. Thank you, bro. Well, well, well. Look at that surprise. The Lord is good. Just come on and have a seat. Come on and have a seat. When the fire goes out, all these things happen. People will fall away. People will hate one another, betray one another. All this stuff happens because so many people have let the fire of God in their lives go out. And now you have nothing but anarchy false prophets rising, and we see this today. You have so many churches where people are just saying anything that comes out of their mouth, and people are believing it, right? If you have the fire of God moving and actively working in your life, you're going to hear and know when someone is speaking to you false teaching. Cause you're gonna, the Spirit is going to tell you, uh, you know that's not right. Uh, you know that's not right. You know the Bible doesn't say that. Right? But when you let the fire go out, you actually are opening yourself up to the possibility where you start believing false teaching. There's no spirit to warn you because you've let the fire die down and go out. So you start thinking, well, if the pastor says it, it must be true. Oh, yeah, the pastor says I could have two wives because, you know, Abraham had two wives. The Bible says man shall leave mother and father and cling to wife, not wives, wife. That's singular, amen? But when people start saying something that sounds like, well, you know, brother, you can have a wife for the business and a wife for the pleasure and a wife to maintain the home because God wants you to take care of all things. Sounds good, right? But you know it's false. But they can make it sound good. That's why you have to keep the fire going. And here's what I'm talking about. Matthew 25, 1 and 13. The Bible says this. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a cry, Here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, Since there will not be enough for us and for you, go rather to the dealers and buy for yourselves. And while they were going to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. 
Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. You got to keep that fire going. And like it says right here, you have to bring extra supplies so you can keep the fire going. Right? When you get saved and you have that baptism of fire from the Holy Spirit, that's a one-time thing, right? You don't have to keep getting baptized every Sunday and every Monday and every Tuesday. But in order to keep the fire going, you have to do what the wise virgins did. You have to prepare yourself. Bring extra supplies. Bring a Bible with you. Bring some praise songs with you. Bring some worship songs with you. Bring a devotional with you. Bring things that are going to keep your mind focused on him. So when you are by yourself and there's no one around to encourage you, like we were talking about in communion, you can encourage yourself in the Lord. You can keep your own fire going because you have the tools. Then the people who don't have the tools will say, hey, can I borrow your Bible? And you have to say like the wise virgin, say, I only have one Bible and I need it to read for myself to keep myself encouraged. You know, now maybe you can say, maybe you can come and read with me, but I'm not going to give you my Bible, right? Because that's what's keeping you encouraged. Or you may have to tell them, hey, you know what? I'm in a deep study and I can't stop, but if you go down to the street right there to the Christian bookstore, you can get a Bible. But they should have brought their own Bible. That's the whole point. You don't know what's going to come, so you have to prepare yourself. That's why it's important to come to church. That's why it's important to read your Bible. That's why it's important to meditate on Scripture and prepare yourself and be ready. So when the enemy comes, you know, oh, my God, everything is horrible. and I just can't make it. You take the shot ah, to get right back up because now you've been fortified, right? You've been prepared and you have fortified yourself. You know, it's, it's like yesterday, Shelly and I went on this photo thing, and it was only the two of us and the leader, who was this guy, Brian. And he was explaining uh, one year he led a big group. It was like 30 people, and they went on this big hike. And then the sun got really hot. He said it, it went up to 105. So all the photographers are retired, and then some had water and some didn't. And then the ones who didn't have water, they were ready to go back, even though they were just starting out. So he had to shorten the photo jump because half the people weren't prepared, right? And, and they tell you before you go on these things, check your camera, check your batteries, check your cards, bring lots of water. They tell you all these things so you will have everything you need to get what you need done. In the same way, it's important that you not only keep the fire going, but you have the supplies on hand so it doesn't go out, right? Here, all of us have phones, right? Come on now. We all have phones. Everybody has a cell phone. Who doesn't have a cell phone? Right, we all have cell phones. You know, Bible apps are free. F-R-E-E, -E, that means free. All you have to do is take the time to put the Bible on your phone. Then, because we all don't leave the house without our phone, you will have your Bible with you all the time. And what's even greater is that because you have it with you all your time, then you're never, you're never unprepared. You're always ready, right? See, we don't have an excuse a few generations ago, they had an excuse. You know, some family Bibles are bigger than this computer. They're like that big. You got names in there. Big text because, you know, when you get older, your eyes can't read. You understand, right? So you don't want to be walking around carrying a big Bible like that. But we're without excuse because you can get the whole Bible on a phone that fits right there in your pocket or your purse. Right? And then you can just reach down in your pocket and purse, and boom, there it is. So we should actually 
be the generation of Christians who are on fire all the time. Because we all have the tools available at a moment's notice. There's just no excuse. And we actually, if we have the Bible on our phone, it doesn't do us any good if we don't open the app and use it, right? You know, all of us have apps on our phones. We all do. Come on. Let's be honest. I think on my phone, last time I looked at it back up, I have 209 apps on my phone, right? Some of them I don't even use, but they're on there. But I don't want to get rid of them because one day I might need it. But the apps that I use most frequently, they're hot buttons, so I know. And the number one app I have on my phone is my Bible. Shelly will tell you, I mean, when we drive and, and she's the driver and I'm the navigator, I'm just on my Bible. And when she's running late, I just hold on, but I'm still going to read it, right? Use the tools that God has made available to us, right? Don't be like a, the foolish version and say, hey, let me borrow your Bible. We all can have our own Bibles. And if you need more than a basic Bible, you may have to pay a few dollars, but what is that? That's a frap or a mocha or something or any one of those exotic drinks you guys can start. Just skip one time. Then you can have, you know, a pretty good Bible on your phone all the time. Amen? Amen. And finally, 2 Timothy Chapter 4, verses 3 and 4, the Bible says, I think it's talking about today. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. Don't be deceived. Don't let someone deceive you. I don't care even if it's me. Don't let me deceive you. Use your Bible, read your Bible, open your Bible, and make sure that everything that you're being or you're allowing to come into your hearing is in the Word. If it's not, this don't have anything to do with it, right? You know, there, there are some uh, preachers who I know they're false teachers. I know they are because I've listened to them like, oh, that, that, that person is tripping. But I'm not going to spend every Sunday bad-mouthing that person. I already know what they teach is false. All I'm going to say to anybody else is something I learned a long time ago from the original Bible answer man, Dr. Walter Martin. Someone called into his program. You know, years ago he had this program where you could call in, and ask questions about scripture. And he would answer pretty much everything. He was called the Bible answer man. Because you know, no matter what you ask he would know. And somebody called in one day. And asked about this big name person. Who was on the radio a lot. And all he would say was. I, I, I'm aware of who you're talking about. I just can't recommend their ministry. And he left it at that. I just can't recommend it. He didn't bad mouth them. He didn't say they were no good so and so. And any of that, he just said, I just can't recommend a ministry. And he didn't even get into why he couldn't recommend it. He just says, I can't go there. And I've always remembered that. So when I know someone is a false teacher, I'm not going to like try to make them bad by telling people, oh, they're no good, they're from Satan, da 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 I'm just going to say, you know what? I don't have anything to do with that ministry. You know, if you get something out of it, hey, that's great. That's just not my cup of tea. Amen? Because I don't want to find myself turned away listening to myths, things that, you know, they sound good, but you know are not true. Like having two and three wives, and it's okay to steal. The Bible does not tell you it's okay to steal. So why do you think it's okay? Because someone else told you, oh, this is, 
we can get away and no one ever is going to know. Here's the thing. You're going to know. The Spirit's going to know. And when you start doing things that are against and contrary to Scripture, you're quenching the Spirit. You're stopping the move of God in your own life. And then what happens, and this happens all the time, people get away with a crime. They get away. But they're not satisfied because then they start thinking, well, if we can just get one more score, then I'm going to stop. And it's that last score where they get caught. Right? It happens time and time again. So the best defense against that is just don't do it. Because once you start doing things wrong and you get away with it and you think it's okay and you think you're fooling everybody, it's inevitable that you're going to get caught. And then the first thing out of your mouth is, oh, Lord, please help. God's going to say, I, I don't know who you are. I, I don't know you. Because my child wouldn't be doing that, right? All right. So, watch the flame. When you see the flames getting low, do your part. Blow on that fire. Get some more kindling. Right? Keep the home fires burning. I love that phrase. Keep the home fires burning. That means you do your job to keep everything right in your own house. Amen? Keep the home fires burning. If you believe that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, then it's your job to keep the fire that God has blessed you with inside burning. Jeremiah chapter 20 verse 8 9 says this. I love this passage. He says, whenever I speak, I cry out, I shout violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and a derision all day long. If I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, there is in my heart as if it were a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I am weary with holding it in, and I can't. Jeremiah is known as the weeping prophet. Because he saw the end of Jerusalem, the city, before the Babylonians came. And he kept telling people and warning people, you got to stop because destruction is coming. So much that the king and his court had him arrested, beaten, flogged numerous times. Right? And so at one point, Jeremiah said, oh, I'm just not going to say anything. Because the only word God has given me is violence and destruction. So I'm not going to say it because I'm tired of getting beat down. But listen to what he says. He says, I'm not going to mention him. But when I get to that point, the fire in me just says, you got to say it. You can't hold back. And what did he say? Even though I'm getting tired from holding back, I can't. I just can't hold it back anymore. I got to let it out. I got to speak what God has told me, right? My wife knows this because in our relationship, I'm the one that's always going to say it. Good or bad, I'm the one that's going to say it. I can't just like, oh, everything is great. Everything. If I know there's a problem, I'm going to be the one to say, hey, you know, we, we, we got to talk. We got to fix this, right? That's just me. With her, she's more content to say, you know what? I'm just going to pray. I'm going to pray to God gets your stuff in the head and turns you around, right? But I can relate to Jeremiah because I know how it is to say, I, I, I can't hold back. I'm going to bite the hand so it goes, ah! Now I can speak. That's me. That's just me. And in fact, that's what God wants us all to be, where you can't be suppressed. You can't be stifled. The fire in you is so hot, you have to tell someone. This is what the Bible says. I know you don't want to hear it, but it's my duty to tell you. Now, you're free to reject it, but 
I don't want him to say, hey, I just asked you to say a few words to that person and you, you stifled yourself. It's my duty to tell you, right? If you truly care about a person, you're going to tell them. You know, years ago, there was this movie called, I think it was called Shadowland, and it was about a guy who loved a lady, but he would never say how he really felt. And then in the end, she ended up marrying someone else because he never said it. And I hated that movie because it's like, dude, if you care about a person, you just go out there and say it. Now, she may not feel the same, but at least you know you told her how you felt. Amen? Just say it. Don't, oh, I'm, I'm in love with you, but I can only talk to myself about it. And I'm watching your whole life, and I'm just, oh, oh, oh. I hate movies like that. Just grow some and say, you, I, I, I care about you. Please. Because you're going to spend the rest of your life regretting when they go off and marry someone else. Right? And you know what? Most of the time, when you feel that way about a person, they actually do like you. But they're waiting on you, because you're the man, to say, hey. Right? Am I right, ladies? Okay, thank you. Don't just restrain yourself. Let it, if you really care about somebody, let it out. If you really love God, then let it out. Don't hold it back. Let it out. You don't want people like Marissa was telling us in the Bible study. She's like, wow, you really a Christian? I, I, I don't see the witness. Really? Well, how long have you been a Christian? Because I'm wondering if you're just a regular, regular person, right? Let it out. Matthew 26, 38 to 41 says this. Then he said to them, my soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Please remain here and watch with me. And going a little further, he fell on his face and he prayed, saying, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, so you could not watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. You want the fire to keep going, but the flesh keeps getting distracted by all these other things that are not going to keep the fire going. Right? I want to keep the fire going. But they're having... Three drinks and happy hour. I'm just going to go for one drink, right? The next thing you know, it's four drinks, and now you're like, oh, I'm going to have to call an Uber to get home. You could have avoided all that by just not being distracted, right? If you have a mission that God has given to you, make that your first priority. This is what I want to do. Then if I have free time later, I can enjoy myself. But right now, the mission is the most important thing, right? This is what I need to be doing. This is the most important thing. Because truth be told, when God gives you something to do, the enemy is immediately, bring up distractions. Okay, which ones do we have? Which worked last week? Okay, that didn't work last Okay, let's have a new one. That's how he works. The moment you decide, okay, I'm going to go to Bible study on Wednesday. Okay, what can we do? We can make the kid sick, right? It, it just goes on and on and on. I can give him a flat tire. Then he get upset. Then they turn around and go home. Mission accomplished. Whatever it is, if God gives you a mission for something for you to do, you have to make it your mission to get it done. He said to the disciples, 
You can't wait for me just one hour. I'm over here. I ask you to touch and agree with me over there just for one hour. But you know what happened? The sleep demon got up. He found them sleeping. Because it was in the middle of the night. Of course they're tired. You know, Jesus, if you if you'd have came and said, uh, watch with me for an hour at 7 o'clock, I would have been right there. But at 1130, I'm... It's been a long day. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Right? That's why you have to have those things that are going to help you overcome the flesh. Amen? 2 John 6, 1. Excuse me. 2 John chapter 1, verses 6 through 11. The Bible says, and this is love. Let me make sure I add it. And this is love, that we walk according to his commandment. This is his commandment, just as you heard from the beginning, so that you should walk in it. For many deceivers have gone out into the world, those who not confess the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh. Such a one is a deceiver and the antichrist. Watch yourselves so that you may not lose what we have worked for, but may win a full reward. Let me stop. What he's trying to get us to understand is that the disciples were willing to lay down their lives so that we could have the story of Jesus and what he did and what he means for all of us, right? This was their life's work. And we have it now in the Gospels and the rest of the Scripture. John is saying, pay attention so you don't let the fire go out and you don't lose our life's work, which is the scripture which has been given to you. That's what he's trying to get us to really understand. They all became martyrs over time. But their life's work continues because we all have the scripture. So it's important for us to pay attention so we don't lose their sacrifice and life's work. But by holding on to scripture, we will get a full reward. And you know what the full reward is? It's not winning the lotto. It's not getting a new car, although those things are nice. It's being found in the Lamb's Book of Life, where your name is written therein, and he says, come on in. There's streets of gold, mansions, and it's all for you. That's what they don't want us to lose. That's the full reward, right? Let me continue. Everyone who goes on ahead and does not abide in the teaching of Christ does not have God. Whoever abides in the teaching has both the Father and the Son. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, do not receive them into your house or give them any greedy, for whoever greets him takes part in his wicked work. He's saying to you, if you know the person is of the enemy, don't bring that person into your house. Don't say, well, you know, if I bring him home, I can change him with missionary dating. No, you cannot. You can't do it. If you want that person to change, bring him to church. Let the whole church pray over him. Right? You know, there's power in prayer. And it's even more power when all of the saints are praying for the same thing. That's what is so imperative to understand. We can't do this by ourselves. We need the support of other people. That's why he says, hey, don't bring him in your house. Don't bring that devil in your house. If that devil wants to be saved, bring him to church and let the whole church pray for him and welcome them and let them see what real fellowship is really about, right? You know, it's, it's not about nice dresses and big hats and big Bibles. It's not about those things. It's about loving one another, praying for one another, encouraging one another. Amen? All right. We're done. Check yourself. Check yourself. Make sure 
that you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, make sure you have your Bible, you have your verses, you're, you're right where you're supposed to be. You know, when, when your car starts making strange sounds, unless you're a mechanic, what do you do? You take it to the shop, right? You say, you know, I don't know what's going on, but it's making a strange tick, 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 tick. And then they'll tell you, oh, your timer's off, or your alternator needs to be changed, or whatever it is, right? Then the mechanic fixes it for you. Then you're back to smooth sailing, right? right. Amen. When you find something off in your own life, check yourself out. Take a spiritual inventory and say, when was the last time I went to church or Bible study or had a good study on my own at home? When did I open a devotion lab? Do self-inventory. Check yourself so, as the song says, you don't wreck yourself. Right? That means if you don't want to crash, are the wipers clean? Because, you know, here's, here's a free tip. This is a season to change your windshield wipers before it starts raining every day. Do it now. Because when it rains heavy and your wipers need to be changed, you don't change them, you can't see. Right? So this is the time. In the same way, this is the time to check your spiritual inventory to make sure you're going to be ready when the enemy comes, when everything is copacetic. No problems. Wife's good. Husband's good. Kid's good. Kid's back in school. You have a little bit more time. Now's the time to check your inventory out. So you can fix what needs to be fixed and not miss anything. I'm going to close on this verse. 2 Corinthians 13.5 says, Examine yourself whether or not you be in the faith. Prove to your own self. Don't you know your own self that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless you fail to meet the test. Check yourself. Make sure you are doing what you're supposed to be doing. Make sure... That your life lines up with your testimony, right? If you say you say, act say, right? If you say you're God's man or woman, act like God's man or woman, right? You know, just like there's no substitute for good manners. You guys ever hear that? There's no substitute for good manners? There's no substitute for... Bible study, prayer, apostles' doctrine, fellowship. You get those things when you come to church. There's no substitute. You may think it's a substitute, but it's just like, you know, sugar substitutes. They're not the same thing. They say it is. It may taste the same, but those things, science are, is actually showing, are more harmful than the real thing. So don't get a substitute. Just go for the real thing. Amen? Keep the fire burning. It's important. Don't let the fire go out in your life. Do what you need to do to keep it going. Prepare yourself. Be wise and not foolish. Let's pray. Father, we thank you once again for this time. We give